Shut up, said James. It's not funny. Fuck you. I think it's hilarious. How do you like that? Fucking foreigners. On starry nights when the moon is full and the air still, you can hear the sounds of faraway ships and distant laughter. They echo over the hills and through the valley, down calm canals and sleepy inlets. Every engine knows that these are the sounds that say the harbor is hard at work at the big station by the sea. One night, a special load of fish was ordered. Sir Topham Hatt decided that extra vans must be added to the train that the men call the Flying Kipper. The only vans available were old ones. They had not been used for a long time. Henry waited impatiently by the quayside as Duck shunted them into position. Thomas puffed by with the mail train. Hello, Duck. Going fishing? I'd take care if I were you. Why, huffed Duck. Well, for one thing, puffed Thomas, remembering his own experience, if fish get into an engine's boiler, they always cause trouble. And for another, fish can be awfully smelly. And I know what I'm talking about. Good night. Henry grunted dreadfully. You'll just have to put up with it, Henry, said his driver. At least the extra load will mean you can have another engine help us up Gordon's Hill. Meanwhile, Duck was waiting at Edward's station so that he could help the heavy train by pushing from behind. Henry made good progress. When they reached Edward's station, his driver stopped the train beyond the platform. Then Henry gave a special signal. Beep, 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 beep. I need help, please. Beep, beep, replied Duck. I won't be long. Duck buffered gently up to Henry's train. He was not coupled on. Henry would then be able to run on without stopping when they reached the top of the hill. Ready, whistled Duck. And off they went. Soon they reached Gordon's Hill. Push hard, push hard, puffed Henry. We're doing it, we're doing it, replied Duck. Henry was pulling his train harder than he realized. Duck felt the weight on his buffers slacken. Then Duck noticed something else. There's no sign of a tail lamp, he puffed. He whistled, but there was no reply. Meanwhile, Henry had noticed something, too. My train's getting heavier, he thought to himself. I'm slowing down. Then there was trouble. No one was hurt, but a strong smell of fish hung in the air. Next day, workmen found the broken tail lamp at the bottom of the hill. Sir Topham Hatt spoke kindly to Duck. The accident wasn't your fault. We should have checked that this tail lamp was fixed on properly. We'll soon have you in working order again. Thank you, sir, said Duck sadly. Thomas told me to be careful about fish. They got me in a right pickle, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs>